Hi, welcome back to the channel. You're watching Beast Automotive. Welcome back to the channel, guys. So today we're gonna go over uh, how to maintain a bike and uh, bring it back to life. It's been sitting for a while, it needs regular maintenance and tune-ups on it. So we're gonna go over on how to do some of those to help give you some tips. So let's get right into it. To start out with, we uh, ordered some stuff. So we have a, a bench press here and a tire changer. And we got those because we're working on some of these bikes over here. And we need to put a new front tire tube on this bike here. So, so we got that. We got the tire changer to help out with that and for our ATVs. The bench press, we're, uh, we're gonna very carefully try to press out this piston head because it is stuck on it. So uh, we're rebuilding this motor for this XR200 right here. The motor on here uh, has some JB Weld on it. So we're gonna go ahead and rebuild that here. We're gonna use the press trying to push out the piston head. So we'll, when we get that set up, we'll uh, show you guys a video on that and any tips that we have to find out to help out with that. Okay, back to this bike. This is a 1983 Honda XR350. We uh, picked it up just recently. We are told it's been sitting since 2001. So it obviously needs a clean up on the carburetors and the spark plug and so we're gonna tear it down to take care of that uh, this bike has had been out in the sun a little bit as you can see over here we have some oxidization going on on the gas tank and um, we'll uh, carefully scrape that off and try to buff it out to clean it up some better and we'll do that probably touch up all of the plastics on it at least the gas tank right there that's the worst part but otherwise so this is an XR350 from 1983 it is a, a heavier bike even just to lean it, it you can feel the weight of it it's pretty heavy but it is pretty good on power if we get it going um, we're a little worried here because you can kick it over by hand but if you look up here, the auto decompression is in play when we kick it over. So we're hoping that it's just the decompression working on it. But we're, uh, we'll hook up our compression tester and we'll check that out. And uh, it is dual carbed as well. So there's two carburetors on here, dual exhaust ports on it. So, I mean, it, it has some good power, but we just... So we're gonna take the gas tank off, the seat and the gas tank off, so we can get to the carbs. We'll check the air filter, take the spark plug out, compression tester, and uh, check all those out. We want everything to match up to where it's supposed to be so we can get this bike running good. And I'm pretty sure that we can get it running. It did fire up, but it didn't want to stay running. I'm sure the, from been sitting for a while, the fuel in there is probably bad too, so. But, uh, yep, we'll just get right into it, turn it apart. All right, so what takes you guys a second to see takes me a few minutes to get to, so. But quickly, I mean, every bike's gonna be different that you're working on. I had to start with the seat and the bolts for it were underneath. They're sitting about right here underneath. Uh, but that came up, came off. Gas tank, held on by a couple bolts here. That came off. And then now we have all this room right here. To get the carburetors off, I loosened the, the air box up and I pushed it back as far as I can. So I have uh, some clearance between the carburetors and the boots for the air box. So I can take the boots carburetors off the boots of the motor to help weasel them out. Since there's two carbs, it's gonna be a little difficult, so. But we're gonna go ahead and do that. Um, the car, the spark plug. 
Man, it is in such a tight spot. Right up in here, it's a really small gap. And so um, I had this special Honda tool specifically for that. So I've used it on my bike, so, and yeah. So we were able to fit it in there, take it off. Spark plug was just filthy. It was completely black and it was kind of a, corroded on the, the nut where it tightened. So it's been sitting there for a long time. So we're gonna replace that with a new one. Uh, I checked, I hooked up my compression tester because I was curious. My biggest worry though is it has auto decompression on it. When you kick the lever over, the decompression engages. And so it decompresses it to make it easier to kick over. And so I was kind of worried about how it would come out when kicking it over. But we're reading 120 and uh, even if that does have decompression on it, that is like really good. Even without decompression, if that was just regular compression, it's testing 120. That's, that's what I shoot for is about, is about that on bikes. When you get to 90 and less, it, it's kind of iffy if, if it has enough compression to run, but I think we got good compression on the spike. So now the next step is I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to these carbs to tear off. I'll just, um, like I said, all bikes are gonna be different, especially cause this is a kind of a special bike cause it has dual carbs. Not a lot of bikes do. Most of them are single carbed, but uh, there's just a couple of screws holding on to the boots, these clamps, and then just, you loosen them up and then uh, weasel it out, wiggle it out and you'll have it out. Um, I'm gonna just leave it hanging right here um, just because it's dual carved, so I don't want to mess with tearing it completely down from throttle cables and all that. I'd rather just leave most of that hooked up, tear apart the bottom, and clean it out. So like we're going to show you. Well, I fought with this for at least half an hour, but I finally, finally got it to where I could get the carbs off because as you can see, the dual carb set up here it did not leave a lot of room, but dual inlet and dual outlet. So what I had to do for those of you that have dual carbs, I had to loosen up the air box and uh, I was able to squirm it to pretty much take it off, but I just set it on the tire. As I say that, that's falling. But anyways, so I got the air box to, to come off and then the boots, I was able to pull back, which that's now falling off, but I pulled them back. So I, I had room to pull the carburetors back to then pull the intake boots off. So I, and then I was able to squeeze them out. Cause I mean, otherwise it's still like, tight fit because anyway so to make things easier I'm just gonna kind of leave this all set up as it is here and um, we're just gonna go ahead and uh, take the bottoms off and uh, clean them out completely good I'll probably take the tops off and inspect them make sure that they're good but and then we're gonna put it back on. I need to play with the throttle a bit, make sure it's, it seems to be sticking. So I gotta, definitely got my work cut out for me, so. But what I wanna show you guys is how I can clean carbs, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and tear it apart and point out some good things to look into. All right, so here we are. I had to pull the carburetor off because um, one, it'll be easier to clean, but I wasn't worried about that. Two, I, uh, I have to replace some pieces. So this throttle in here would not go up. And then when I could get it to go up, it wouldn't go back down. Turns out, uh, yeah, it's uh, missing the stuff inside eternally. So I mean, gotta fix that um, yeah last person 
that had this and tried fixing it, they kind of screwed it up. So there's this ball joint right here. Can't, right here. And since it's a dual carved, there's supposed to be one on this hole right here, but that's gone missing. And uh, there's this little black connector piece that locks on on the one side and locks on on the other side onto the ball joints. And then that's what, um, when you use the throttle cable, since it lifts up the main carburetor, it'll go and lift up the secondary carburetor with it at the same time. So that ball joint is missing and broke. So now I gotta look into fixing the main carburetor and figure out a fix for that there. I have a couple ideas. Trying to find a replacement has not done me good in my search. But anyways, it's coming a little more project than I was thinking it's gonna be, but either way, I'm still excited. Uh, I already got the new spark plug on, so that's good. Other than that, we're just gotta get this carburetor going and then um while we're here i actually so this was broke when we purchased it uh i have a replacement i just had a replacement from a another bike laying around so we're gonna switch that on it so it, that'll look better instead of a broken one but the carburetor is the main thing right now so i forgot to record about me taking the carburetors apart and cleaning them Especially because these are dual carbs. There are so many small, tedious things on here. But um, beforehand, we couldn't even get any either one of the the throttles to go up when we when we give it throttle. But now we have fixed it, so they both go up. So what mine had a problem with, really close up in here is there was a piece that was broken off where this piece here connects for the main throttle and then the secondary throttle for the secondary carb. The main throttle wouldn't go up because there was a linkage that was broke off for the throttle body for the throttle arm up here. And kind of tedious, but anyways, we picked up a couple extra carbs for these bikes and I was able to pull parts off of it. So now we're going to Go ahead and put it all back in. And like I said, there's not a lot of room to, to play in here. But we're gonna put this back in and then put the intake in and, and then go back to the boots and all that. So now we're just reversing the process of what we started. So I got a little carried away on this bike uh, putting it back together because I was just so focused on it. It was kind of tough uh, what I did was I uh, I Ended up taking out the top motor mount off to have more play with the cables For the throttle cable and the clutch cable I, I was able to move them a little more to pull the carburetors back and up in and then put the um, Intake boot on and connect it to the carburetors and then move it forward and then connect it to the motor. So I was able to do that. Then after that, we got the airbox boots on, then the airbox on and bolted on and secured and tightened. That was just, it was a mess. Uh, and then I got the side plastics. And while I was doing all that, my dad was cleaning up this gas tank. Um, you'll have to check out earlier at the beginning of this video. And it was, there's, white spots over here and the other side was like completely just white spot on it but now looking at it it looks awesome you can still see like here a little bit here but um we're thinking of just taking the sticker off and then putting new stickers on it i mean there's still a little white up in here but i mean if you saw but what it was before and now from the distance, it, you can't even tell. It looks awesome. We're not done yet. We're going to go over it with some light sandpaper. The best way to bring out the color is, um, you know, scrape off the oxidi oxidization part, and then you sand it, wet sand it. Make sure you get some wet sandpaper. You go over it and over it and over it, 
and you just keep getting finer and finer sandpaper as you go over it until you can't even notice like the scratches and stuff on it. But I just got carried away and we got so excited we got it together and got it running. So I'll get a video of showing you guys of it running. We're just thrilled to have it. Um, other things uh, I would say to watch out for is especially with your carburetors, um, make sure they just get lined up correctly and connected right since it's a dual carb. Uh, we're gonna adjust it up here because the throttle is iffy, but I think that that piece is actually kind of screwed up because it's what it is is it's a wire and it curves in into a, a screw but it looks like it's been turned so much that the wire inside is meshed up and ruined but we'll look at that and show you guys a video of it running sorry guys i uh sidetracked again and i didn't get a video recording of it running but it was one really good bike and um after recovering the seed and tuning it up, it turned out really nice. So uh, I'll put some of those photos up here so you can look at it. But yeah, I mean, those dual carbs, they are a totally different story on these bikes. So you gotta get them tuned and synced and cleaned and all that properly for it to work hand in hand together and work correctly. Um, well, it was really, what was really nice is that uh, I was able to pick up a couple of used carbs that had pretty much a lot of good parts but um so between you know the carbs that were on the bike and then a couple pairs that I picked up separately I probably have another good set of carburetors I can put for a future bike together so um that was really nice and handy just a local uh bike yard that's here in Utah so that was kind of nice to see that um other than that I don't really have a whole lot to say on the bike otherwise it, it was very Beautiful. It came out looking nice and ran pretty good and uh, looking forward to working on another one. So I uh, appreciate you guys watching the video. I uh, hope this helped out some people. I know these dual carbs are a little tricky, especially if something breaks or goes wrong, but uh, hopefully this helps out. So thanks guys and we'll catch you in another one later.